Hello, hello, welcome, I'm Unstable Voltage, welcome to a new stream of a new game. I'm going to be playing some Total War Saga Troy. This is really genuinely a first look at this game. I haven't uh, played it at all, all I basically did was just um, fire it up just to make sure that uh, it was capturing okay for the stream. So I've never played this game. I've played some of the Total War games in the past, mostly Rome 2, Shogun, Napoleon. The one that I've played most is uh, actually Total War Warhammer. That's because I just really like the fantasy setting. Um, I'm not particularly good at them, to be honest. I, I tend to fare a lot better on the actual uh, strategic map side of things rather than the battles, but I still enjoy playing them all the same. So I'm going to be jumping in uh, to a new campaign and uh, we've got a few options here. So obviously this game has only just come out, so we've got, um, we've got Achilles, and we have Agamemnon, we have Odysseus, and we have Menelaus. And I'm going to butcher the names of, uh, uh, of these historical figures uh, quite often. So please be prepared for that. Uh, Gigafreeze, thank you very much for subscribing. Uh, and there's also the, uh, the Trojans as well. We have Hector, we have Paris, we have Aeneas, and we have Sarpedon. Or Sarpedon. Uh, let's go and play as the the Nance. and uh, I'm going to go with Agamemnon because this is uh, built as an easy start. Uh, we are the Archaeans tribe for the Mycenae faction. Um, yep, so let's go in there, see My what we have. Is legendary. So I'm just going to be playing on easy, easy, and that's simply because I'm just literally learning the uh, game here. So our victory conditions, there are two types of victory. There's a total war victory, which is basically trying to uh, like a global domination, I suppose, and uh, uh, conquer the entire map. So defeat your first antagonizing faction, occupy, raise, or sack 100 different settlements, and control the following three settlements, either by direct ownership or through vassals or military allies, which is going to be Troy, Mycenae, and Knossos. Uh, and there's also the Homeric victory, which is more of a storyline type victory, I suppose. Um, there's a lot of specific things that you actually need to do for that one. And I think that's the sort of thing, if you guys are going to be playing it, it's probably something that you want to experience for yourself. It defaulted to the Total War victory, uh, so that's going to be a little bit more free and open uh, without us having to necessarily do storyline events so that's the one that i am going to continue with so let's just take a uh, quick look uh, at our faction here this is where we start on the map down here uh, king of men we can appoint heroes to court positions appointed heroes receive bonuses and provide faction wide effects being in court increases a hero's motivation uh, the lions share entice or force other factions to become your vassals vassals obey you and will give you resources as tributes each turn vassals can be extorted to give more tribute but will grow to hate you as a result and we've got a recommended play style here for our armies so very little in the way of cavalry and things in this particular game it's mostly going to be sort of foot soldiers uh, Agamemnon's roster is the most balanced among the Archaeans with a mix of good heavy armoured infantry, capable ranged units and strong chariots. We have a selection of heroes. We have some archers, skirmishers and tricksters. We have some defenders, protectors, companions and veterans. We do not have access to fighters, so we can't get champions, ravagers or vanquishers. And we have warlords in the form of mentors, commanders and warmongers. Our unique faction units are Agamemnon's guards, which are two-handed heavy, uh, two-handed spear infantry. Uh, we have Agamemnon's companions, which are two-handed axe infantry. And we have light javelin men who are ranged at the onset of the trojan war godlike agamemnon commanded the largest fleet ever to sail the Aegean sea driven by an all-encompassing lust for power and glory the king of mycene rallied, rallied and uh, rallied the many kingdoms of archaea against troy determined to raise the fabled city to the ground in pursuit of his bloody ambition the aging warrior still inspired awe on the battlefield with his heavy armor and mighty swings of his mace he and his younger brother menelaus shared a thirst for revenge against paris who had seduced the spartan ruler's wife and fled across the waters with her 
The Mycenaeans' leader's formidable will was also the source of his hubris. In the Ilad, Homer recounts how Agamemnon, through arrogance and underlying pride, offended Apollo himself and later provoked Achilles into withdrawing the support of his Myrmidons with disastrous results. And we have the son of Atreus and Arope, plus 12% to administration efficiency of royal decrees, and plus 4 influence to region. I'm guessing influence is either like how um, public order worked in previous games. Uh, administration efficiency, I have no idea. That's something that's new to me, so I guess we will find out when we go in. So campaign, you'll gain happiness and army upkeep bonuses and enemy armies may attack rashly when you outnumber them enemy forces have lower morale and combat stats making them easier to defeat like i said this is really just me diving in to see how the game works so without further ado let us hit that start button are we mere playthings of the gods or do we plead divine influence to justify our foolish choices He's taken her! He's taken my wife! You've risked the safety of Troy. Troy is my home now. You have my oath, brother. She will be returned to you. Brother, I can fight! Go. Seek shelter. There'll be plenty of fighting ahead. Helen's flight was a grave wound to Achaean pride. King Menelaus will have his revenge. And his brother will have his war with Troy, just as the gods intended. Okay, there we go. I've just got this installed onto a mechanical hard drive, so my loading times aren't going to be lightning fast. Although still faster than oh, Warhammer. wide ruling Agamemnon. There is only one response to Queen Helen's abduction. And that is war. Brother, your foolish passion has doomed us. Fear not, noble cousins. I stand with you. That sounds this a lot is a like grave Orlando Bloom. insult to Golden Mycenae. Enlist the other Achaean kings. The folly of Paris may convince them to support the forging of a great Achaean empire. Troy thinks to slight me, but they will pay the price. Your brother Menelaus will be relying on your full support in this great endeavor. Paris of Troy must pay! Secure your power at home before embarking on overseas initiatives. The warriors of Tyrins wage war on your allies and vassals at Troizen. They dare to challenge your fame and power. Continue your expansion while ensuring the Trojans pay for their insult to you and your brother. Okay, so here we are. Most of the interface should be relatively uh, familiar and similar to previous Total War games. What have we got up here at the top? So that's our treasury. We've got food, wood, stone, bronze, and gold. Not used to having all of these resources. There's our objectives, royal decrees, diplomacy, divine will, king of men, and the lion's share. And we've got heroes and agents, provinces, known factions... So this has changed a little bit. These are buttons that would normally sort of be down here on Total War. Well, Warhammer is probably the most recent one that I play because I haven't played Attila and I haven't played um, Britannia or whatever the other ones were. Uh, so they've moved these sort of from here and then these are the options that were kind of up here along with the map. Okay, so how they play Mycenae, King of Men. Agamemnon controls his state with the prudence of a good administrator. The heroes at his disposal can be assigned to government posts to aid the king and his subjects. 
the lion's share, Agamemnon can make other factions his vassals. Once under his rule, a faction must pay regular tribute to the great king and comply to any sudden resource demands he might have. Overexploited vassals may become unruly. The enemy sends their warriors against you to ravage your lands and sack your cities, but perhaps they underestimate your strength. March out, engage them in battle, and put them to flight. Okay, defeat the enemy. So we've got our first mission. Objectives. Defeat an army belonging to the following faction, Tyrins. The warmongers of Tyrins have advanced with their forces, which now threaten your lands and the livelihood of your people. March out with your army and defeat them in battle. Armies are used to defend home cities and to attack enemy cities and armies. Armies may be selected by left-clicking, right-clicking to move or attack with the selected army. The reward for this will be 250 food and 80 bronze. Okay, so let's just have a little look around the map. So let's hold the middle mouse button to scroll. That's quite nippy, isn't it? Uh, so this is our capital city here, Mycenae. Uh, and I'm guessing everything within the green borders here uh, is uh, our territory or our provinces. So we've also got um, Epite Epiteros here. Uh, if we click on this... Uh, so Corinth and Stymphalos are also part of the same province, which are these two settlements up here, but we do not control those directly. Uh, and also Tyrins and Troizen are both part of this province. So we're probably going to end up at least grabbing Tyrins from these guys. Uh, Troizen's is a different faction altogether there. Okay, so there's probably not an awful lot we can do. I do have the tutorial set to on because, like I said, I haven't played this particular Total War game before, so I am learning a lot of stuff. So we'll, I'll try not to get too far ahead of the tutorial, and we will select our army. King uh, so we've got Agamemnon in there. He is a shielded epic hero. Uh, we've got some character details about him here if we wish to see them. So he's resistant to flanking. Um... What, does, what are his campaign effects? So he gives extra morale to his army. Reduced recruitment costs for heavy infantry units. Um, plus 4 influence to region. Plus 12 admin efficiency in royal decrees. And plus 3 influence to this region. So why has he got plus 4 and plus 3? And do they stack? Or does it just take the higher one? That's a little bit weird. He's a siege attacker. He can attack city gates. He can hide in forests. He's immune to psychology. Um, so basically fear and terror immune to flanking and he has a hero ability which is a uh, self buff uh, basically it's a heal and increases his armor and melee attack makes him unbreakable and freezes his stamina and he also has a 40 second uh, self buff that increases melee attack and melee defense of all allies within a 40 meter range okay cool um, and he's got uh, some skills that we don't appear to be able to unlock yet, and he'll have some equipment as well. I'm still going off track here, so let's avoid looking at that. So what do we have down here? We have some light swordsmen, we have a unit of militia, we have two spearmen, we've got some young spears, so we've got three spearmen, and we've got some light javelins. So only one ranged unit there as far as I can tell, uh, unless these guys are ranged also. Doesn't look like they are, no. So we've only got the one ranged unit down there. Okay, that's fine. Uh, do we know what they've got in their army? I'm afraid I can't. A couple of units that we can't see, but they've got spearmen, they've got skirmishers and slingers. So they do have some uh, ranged units in there. We don't know what those other two are at this point. Let so let's just go and roll on in. So it does look like the balance of power is very much in our favour. We are going to fight this manually. We can see those other two units now. We've got some light swordsmen and... What was the other unit they had in there? Was it the young spears? Anyway, let's go and jump in. Actually loading faster than I expected. So we actually have weather effects in this. I know they've done things like this in some of the other Total War games where you can uh, wait it out to play in, uh, to fight in different weather or uh, different times of day. It's something that um, uh, Total War Warhammer didn't have, although that had Winds of Magic, so that's why you, but uh, you couldn't really choose to wait. You could just gamble to change the Winds of Magic. So this is raining. Units take longer to recover from fatigue when idle. Let's go and wait it out and see what happens. 
And there we go, we've now got a dry day. So we'll go ahead and start our deployment. We'll have a look Are around you ready on to the mount map. your attack? To triumph, you must rout the enemy in a timely manner. Plan your strategy with care. So the tutorial is actually quite good. I like how it's actually giving me that little breakdown on the right hand side when I highlight a unit that tells me what the individual bars are. So health at the top is expected, followed by morale. Uh, it's very unusual to see stamina actually on the unit display. That was something that um, in previous games, as far as I can remember, you would just find out by selecting a unit and it would tell you if they were fresh or, you know, tired or whatever. Uh, the yellow bar is... No, the orange bar is ammunition. The yellow bar is vehicle health and any status effects at the bottom. Okay, that's fine. Is that going to pop up every time I mouse over it now? It's probably something that I can turn off. So let's have a look. This is a really nice map, actually. Um, I've just got into th that view, which I probably really didn't want. But there is some nice high ground up here. Obviously, we're really going to struggle to get to that. We might be able to get up on this high ground. That could be really useful for us. Work for you. Your warriors may pass through them like ghosts, leaving so we can the hide in forests. unaware of the true threat. Let's go and think about doing that then. What I'd like to do, we do have one unit of, of range. Let's get back down into uh, ground level here. So we've got a unit of range, which are our javelins. I'd love to be able to put them up here. If I can move them to the end of, of here, we can throw down from the top. That could be brilliant. And then the rest of our units, we're going to go and consider just putting them all up front and hiding in the forest here. So we'll have our hero there. All of these guys are basically uh, just just meat. Um, so we'll just draw out a line. I'm going to make a control group for them. And we will start the battle. As soon as the battle starts, I'm going to move this javelin line up Your to the front. Your heroes all have their own unique skills and advantages. Pay close regard to these attributes and let them stoke their rage. Ready to unleash their abilities on the enemy. So heroes have abilities when activated, apply either powerful bonuses to their troops or penalties to the enemies. Yep, so that's not really changed much from previous games. So let's go ahead and start advancing, but stay as much as possible in the woods if we can. We want to sort of stay in the tree line, stay hidden. They're not going to move towards us because we are the attacking force here. Just going to go ahead and put this into a bit of a faster speed. So the map's down in this corner now. I'm used to it being up here in the top right, but now down in the bottom left. So we'll just get everybody over. Obviously, it's not ideal for us because it means that a we're actually... A um, commander a godlike view. Yeah, I know how the tactical map works. Uh, so we're actually using our stamina because we're moving, whereas they're just kind of standing still, which is understandable. Um, difficult to get the camera where I want it to go. There we go. That's a better view. You can actually see what's going on there. Uh, so let's get these guys all lined up along here. And I'm going to run out with my uh, hero. I'm going to just try and bait some of them forward. They do have ranged units. And you can see they're running around. This actually feels... Oh, I'm, I'm double speed. I was going to say that feels a lot faster than things like playing uh, War, Total War Warhammer where even the uh, cavalry units don't seem to move around that quickly. So you can see they're sort of positioning their ranged units forwards, but they're really not that interested in uh, in engaging here. Are they going to be baited? That is the question. Have have they sort of fixed that? Um, not As necessarily the exploit. The hero's rage grows. The anger of Ares made manifest. They are moving closer. Powerful combat abilities. The more experienced the hero the more abilities they may call upon. So this is our rage. Heroes gain rage when fighting. Each battle ability requires a certain amount of rage in order to be used. The current level of rage and abilities can be spent on can be seen when the hero is individually selected in battle. So this is kind of the, the hero's own version of magic, I suppose. Right, are they coming towards us? No, they stopped. So they did move in a little bit and then they stopped. Now, all of, all of these guys down here are melee. Um, this means I've put my um, javelins at a disadvantage because I did want to be able to um, get them to fire from up there in the hill. I'm going to have to bring them down. If these guys aren't going to come forwards, uh, then we are going to have some problems. Let's make sure we get our hero in here. Particularly, we want to try and take down their uh, missile units if we can. So they do have some skirmishes Death over there. From above, like the arrows of Apollo. Have your warriors take cover from the enemy missiles, or else seek out and destroy the cause of this threat. 
So these guys are, are very, very uh, weak. But we can sort of just back them off a little bit and try and set. There we go. So now they're sending the skirmishers forward. So let's get in here with our, our hero. We'll try and flank around with some of these militia if possible. Got these guys back out. Just trying to sort of upset the skirmishers at the moment. The ranged units are sort of backing off. Can we get those guys? Yeah, let's keep going around with the swordsmen. It's going to take a little bit of time for me to get my ranged units into position now. Right, they're backing off. Let's go and hit these guys in the back. Right, let's just pull these young spears out again because they're a little bit weak. Our javelins actually arrived down here pretty quickly. So let's go and get our javelins in position to help with this. Your hero is under attack. Yeah, he's under attack, but that's fine. I'm going to just keep chasing these skirmishers off because they are skirmishers. So we do have the advantage that if we start to run towards them, they will back off like that. So it's a good way to actually stop these units from firing. Because while you're running after them, they're literally just going to keep running around and not actually getting involved in the fight. Now our javelins are actually uh, here. Let's get these young spears forward again. Now, see, they've actually, they're have actually heroes running up there. Not too sure where he's thinking about going. Like the uh, we've actually engaged their slingers. That's great. So we're taking some damage here, but our units aren't really getting wrecked. Let's just bring you guys back a little. So those guys we've we've really sort of seen off. We'll, we'll come back with you. We might be able to... Uh, they're actually breaking. They've not shattered. So the little running man means breaking. Uh, but it doesn't mean that they've shattered. So that's actually quite good. We are taking the occasional uh, shot from... What's his name? Plisthenes? Plisthenes? Not a name that I'm familiar with. Trying to hit single entity units with an arrow is like almost impossible. So, I'm not too worried about that. Now, these units may well turn around and return to the battlefield. So, trying to see them off is not a bad idea. Let's try and get these javelins forward a little bit. We might be able to use them against the uh, the hero here if we're... They're not the javelins, they're the spears. These are the javelins. Uh, I'm guessing trying to hit him from down there isn't really going to work because of the elevation. Actually, nice to see that they've used elevation now in uh, in this game. It's not something that they were too bothered about in previous Total War games. So I quite like that. So we're actually shooting up there with our no javelins now. Fight without tiring. So, yeah, he's just telling me about uh, units getting tired. That's fine. So we are actually managing to throw javelins up on top of that cliff, which I find is... Uh, pretty pretty hilarious um so we can go in and try right you've actually broken now you've completely broken let's chase those slingers down because they are still in the fight um this unit that ran over here is still breaking we're just going to chase that down with the young spears because the young spears aren't great units so we might as well put them to use uh, let's move in with you and yeah our javelins are actually doing a pretty good job of pinning you down the foe has sighted your hidden units now, well, you guys have ran off all the way down there. So we, we've really kept those guys just out of the way. Uh, which is great, really. That's what we wanted to do. Uh, it looks like we are actually... F Does that give us a speed boost? It's melee attack and melee defense. So it's not really going to help me chase those guys down. But do they? can they actually see me in there right now? If we get over there, can they spot me? So I'm just trying to get some units flank. over here. Drive them off. Who's, who's attacking my flank now? These guys... These guys have stopped breaking, but they're, we're going to just chase them down. Probably don't want two units chasing them. Um, so let's bring the light swordsmen back. The militia can deal with them because it's only slingers. Uh, the hero's still taking some damage from our... Javelins. Yep, swordsmen are coming back. Now, how are things going with you? With the, oh, they've actually given me the slip. One they got right past me. No more ammunition. That's not bad, though, because that now means we can actually hit them from behind and get them in a sort of a, a pincer movement here. So we're going to try and charge in with the young spears. Our, it says our javelins are out of ammunition, which is not, not great. Right, those units are now completely broken. So we're going to try and just smash into these guys down here. At least, oh, you've hit one of them. Well, well done. 
not a lot of unit collision in this game. You'll notice that like we ran straight through the middle of the army. If this was some some of the other Total War games, they would have got bound up and caught uh, with the hero and wouldn't have been able to just run away so easily like that. So that is definitely something that's that's a little bit different. Uh, we definitely want to um, try and do some damage to, to their hero here. Uh, we have this unit of slingers that's still trying to run up, run away from us, so we'll continue to just chase it around the map a little bit. Uh, Balance of Power is still very much in our favour. Looks like he might be using one of his abilities. I'm going to keep the javelins up nearby, not because they can actually hit him, but we'll have the bonuses for you know su superior unit numbers nearby. We'll charge in with the light swordsman, because I'm a little bit worried about these spears, so let's try and get them out of there and save them. Those light swordsmen have broken. Um, I'm going to come back with my hero. We'll keep those young spears chasing uh, chasing them down. Where are you going? Come back here. Those guys have shattered. That's fine. So all we really need to do now is just take their leader down at this point. Uh, that unit hasn't gone off. The, uh, that unit has shattered. So let's run in this direction with our spearmen. And we might be able to sort of catch those slingers right in the middle. That'd be ideal for us. We'll keep our eye on this over here. So our javelins are sort of involved in this. We don't want the javelins in the fight. We just want them nearby. Uh, we're coming back with um, Agamemnon, but he's having to run up a hill now, so that's going to tire him out. And you guys are still trying to see these uh, skirmishers off. Okay, so you're still fighting, but we're doing well. How are things going over here? I wasn't watching this, and they've actually given given me the slip. The enemy chose victory. Is close enough to. I think we are about to get this because I think they've got the army losses penalty. Yep. So the hero's now broken. He is running away. And we're just going to chase him down. Might even be able... Well, we probably won't be able to kill him. He is exhausted, though. We'll keep chasing him anyway. Trying to get some of these other units off the map. Yeah, we've actually caught these skirmishers, and we've now got them right on the edge of the map. These guys... I mean, they can see us. We can potentially catch them. Uh, where was the other unit that we had here? I thought I had two units over here. Uh, there's the javelins. Let's keep them sort of in. Yeah, we should win this. I'm surprised the battle hasn't ended already. Really need these slingers to just uh, break for us. I'm sure I had two units over here before. Let's get you guys over here just in case they try and run around this way. Looks like that might be what they're doing. How are things going on down here? You guys have now broken. You're running off the map. Excellent. Uh, those guys have now left the map. Cool. So that's going relatively well. And there's the victory. We've got it. So it was a bit messy. Um, that certainly didn't feel... Uh, I don't know. It feels different to some of the other uh, Total War games. Just the way that that works. Let's end the battle anyway. It was a win, so I'll take it. So we suffered 157 losses to the AIs 301. So, you know, they uh, we did deploy slightly more, but we only lost half as many. This little battle is nice. Now you must decide the fate of the captives taken in battle. You may punish them for taking up arms against you, or choose the path of mercy instead. Okay, so we took out two of their units. We've got three options here. We uh, can have lives as barter, which will increase our treasury. Uh, spill their blood, which will give morale to our own units. Um, or we can use take them on and basically increase our unit replenishment. I think right now we'll replenish our units because I did take a few more losses there than I would like. So we have completed that particular mission. Excellent. The warmongers of Tyrion have advanced with their forces, which now threaten your lands. Yep, that's the one we've done. Do we get a new mission Victory straight after? Three recruits can be mine. trained to build up your forces and replace warriors lost in battle. 
This will be a long war, and your adversaries gather in strength. You would be wise to look to your own armies in response. Okay, so we need to maintain up to 12 units in total. We currently have seven. That will give us some more food and bronze. Uh, apparently that was a close victory. All right. Uh, we killed their leader. Excellent. So let's have a look at the treasury here. So we don't... Oh, we do. Gold is there. So our treasury is a mixture of things. It isn't just like flat gold. So let's look at the army. Uh, we can recruit down here. And we have the current options of militia, young spears, spearmen, arcane slingers, and skirmishers. I'd like to get some slingers because we're a little bit light on ranged units. Uh, where can we see the cost? So there's the food. So it's food to hire. Uh, food to uh, food for upkeep and food to hire. The skirmishers are a little bit more expensive to uh, initially recruit, uh, but they're not much more expensive to maintain. So we'll get two units of those, and I think we'll get one unit of skirmishers. That's actually used quite a lot of our food. I'm seeing a building icon here on Mycenae because there's something that we can build. So what do we have here already? So. This is the town. This is the, the town center. Uh, we have our walls, which is our defensive structure. Stop us from getting raided. This is our muster field. So basically, this is our barracks. Let's just get our melee units. And this is our practice range. So this is our uh, ranged units. And then we could build some other buildings. We could get a statue of Agamemnon. Uh, enemy factions are more likely to attack the region if you build one of those, but it gives melee defense for all units on recruitment. Uh, morale Prepare for units recruited increase. in the province and influence over other province. This is all stuff that we can't really do until we've got much bigger cities, so I'm not really looking at that right now. Um, there is a... I do not know that word. A Cryptoria? Um, so experience for all units per turn. Own armies in this province. It reduces the campaign movement range of enemy armies and gives plus 60 line of sight to the region. It's like a, yeah, so like a sort of a lighthouse, isn't it? Oh, well, watch, yeah, watch tower. And then it goes to watch tower patrols and it allows us to get light swordsmen if we go up to the second rank. That, uh, we can also get guard houses, bowyers, chariot assembly, military camp. Uh, some other options here. Oh, there's a lot of stuff here. So food warehouse will give us food per turn. Lumber warehouse, obviously. Wood per turn. Is it wood per turn? Yeah, 5% five, 5 wood per turn from buildings. Vineyard for happiness. Chif so, um, this also gives influence. So, influence and happiness are not the same thing. So, Chifton's Hall and Mud Brick Houses gives us growth. And then there's all of these things as well. All these different um, temples to the different gods that all give us different stuff. So much stuff to go through. So much stuff to learn uh so there's events do we have any sort of research known factions missions do we have a new mission uh we've got one oh most of the troops is the only mission that we've got notification we've got unassigned skill points for agamemnon so we can give him one of these two abilities so we can give him reinvigorate which gives him um, plus 2.5% to his hit points and the reinvigorate ability which in is plus 18% stamina to himself and all units in a 30 meter range or we can give him the March of Hermes um, which is plus 8% speed and plus 10% stamina. I actually like that. I think it's really good for trying to chase down um, like ranged units and I note that they are mutually exclusive but they also have some extra things that you can unlock for them uh, later on there's quite a few to choose from but they are mutually exclusive as you level up so this one is more on sort of uh, uh, stamina and this one is more on speed so we're going to go for the speed option there not sure that we picked up any additional equipment or anything a great so let's back out of that uh, is it based on the book or the movie i don't think it's based on either to be honest i'm not sure what they've used as a uh, 
as a reference they've probably just taken it from you know sort of historical references and uh you know from all uh, all the classics they mention like uh, homer and stuff like that so it is probably just using the uh the classic myths i'm not necessarily sure that they've based it on any one particular source uh, i'm not sure what you mean by how many graphics does it have um maybe i'm mis misinterpreting that question there you can elaborate on that a, a little bit i will try to answer uh it doesn't look like we've got any research we've got the, As ruler i guess that's what royal decrees are empire you may issue decrees while such orders can take time to enact their beneficial effects are long lasting okay so royal decrees are basically our our tech uh the rulers of, of the again may issue royal decrees which take a number of turns to enact once fully enacted a decree brings a permanent civic or military benefits to the faction only one decree may be enacted at a time okay so what have we got here so we, looks like we've already got ro royal stone plus two happiness in province faction wide or plus three influence faction wide this would give us 280 food faction wide i mean our food income is actually quite decent stone isn't great bronze isn't great gold isn't great right now that would give us bronze this one's giving us gold so what could we get here plus eight percent battle speed for all units that's actually quite nice i really like having speed so let's go ahead and work on that victory is mine so that's going to take eight turns diplomacy Relations can we get trades with, with anybody powers may be managed through diplomacy broker treaties of trade alliance war and peace to either provoke or placate your fellow rulers always be aware that others may view your negotiations as a threat or an opportunity so we are at war with one faction which are the tyrans we have non-aggression pacts with salamis pylos and it it hacker if hacker i have no idea uh military access through troizen uh, and we're defensive allies with sparta we also have one vassal which is troizen um so that's why we have military access through them um so we can actually get them to attack for us can we get trade with anybody so who likes us so we have non-aggression pacts so sparta we have a we're defensive allies with sparta okay um so will you do a deal with us where do we get the option here non-aggression military access defensive military make vassal offer confederation peace treaty doesn't seem to be any trade options you see their economic resources ah negotiate I'm there sure we go we can reach an agreement so military access and it tells us what the chances are of them accepting that's quite nice barter agreement offer an exchange of resources for a fixed number of turns that's what we want to try and do and that's the number of turns and this is what we want to offer so we can actually just it's not like um trade agreements in other games where you just get a sort of a, a, a increase of gold or an increase of food per turn this is actually as saying well i've i've got an abundance of this resource so i'd like to give it to you for some of another resource so like maybe maybe i've got a decent amount of wood and i want to give you like 20 wood per turn and i'd like you to give me like one two three gold per turn for five turns and then see if they will accept that no and they've accepted right okay so i understand how that works now it's a bit fiddly i don't think that's nearly as as fast as it was in in previous games i think there's a lot more micromanagement uh, in that aspect of things so that's a bit of a fiddle uh okay the line share Agamemnon, you are a lord of men those you conquer may serve as vassals they will be forced to obey without question and pay tribute at your command so we can do, we've only got one vassal at the moment which is troizen we can demand something from them instantly and this is our tax rate so we can actually i'm assuming we can pop this up to increase the amount of stuff that we get from them we don't want to upset them too much but i think we can probably go no that actually upsets them quite a bit 
even there it's still yellow so we've put it on the minimum for the time being we're probably more likely to force that once we have a larger army because they'll be scared to sort of say no king Here, of men you may appoint trusted aides to help govern mycenae no other king is able to share their burden in this manner so king agamemnon may appoint characters within his faction to positions of authority on the king of men panel characters must reach a certain level of experience before they may be appointed the eligible criteria as well as the bonuses and penalties applied for appointing characters may be viewed by inspecting the tooltip on each position so the laura jettis um select a hero to assign to a position in your court so this gives motivation we can't do any of this yet anyway so i'm not too concerned about that uh do i prefer to have a campaign with heroes or to have a unit for your general um well i mean i guess most total war games have both so you normally have um i mean again like i said the one that i've played most is total war warhammer where you have uh, a unit for your general and then you can have um specific heroes embedded in the army and uh, some of them are quite strong it often depends on the faction that you're playing although i i don't tend to have a lot of heroes embedded in armies i tend to use heroes more as uh agents on the map for you know disrupting the enemy and stuff like that uh i'm gonna go ahead here then that's divine will the gods on this either wow more stuff. the fates of men bestowing benefits and curses as they see fit to be high in their favor is to be sure of success fall too low in their esteem and you will suffer so the Olympian gods will be honored or displeased by various actions and events as the Trojan War plays out. Their favor towards your faction may be surveyed and sought on the Divine Rule panel. Powerful bonuses are received if the gods are sufficiently disposed towards you. So we've got the different gods here and I guess the higher we get up the more uh, bonuses we get. So plus two to siege holdout time. And we don't have the resources because you need food and stuff to offer prayer and tribute to them. And we've already Remember seen that there are buildings day. that you can build in order to um, increase that. So all of these things, we can actually build shrines towards them. Okay, I'm going to hit the next turn button because we need to build our army up to complete that mission. And uh, Argos there is raiding uh, Tyrins. I mean, we could get our vassal to help us. Uh, I think we'll probably end up having to take that at some point. We can probably confederate. Root strength alone will Troisons. not win this war. Issue a decree ordering your finest minds to research new methods of warfare, lest others overtake you. So, okay, we have to issue a royal decree. Your people are eager to follow your orders, for it is thought that your wisdom, though it is through the, your wisdom that they will flourish. Issue a royal decree, and they will be put to work. Available decrees may be viewed on the royal decrees panel. So this is the royal decrees panel. So this is the one we're working on. So are these ones that we can already do? So we can get gold per turn, or we can get stone per turn. Let's get some stone in the bank. I mean, I can't click on either of these. This is the one that we're working on. I expect to be obeyed. Yeah, so these ones we've already unlocked. This is the one we've clicked on. I don't think there's anything else that we can do here. That's weird. That I do not understand. Uh, we still need to build this army up. We only have 10 units. We need two more. Let's go and get a couple of... I mean, militia are cheap, but I think we'll get a couple of swordsmen in there. That'll take us up to 12, but I think we're going to get a slinger in there as well. I do like ranged units, although having a, an army that is entirely ranged is not a good idea. Probably don't have enough resources to build anything at the moment. Actually, we do. Would be nice. What units could we get here? Light javelin men chariots chariots would be nice let's go ahead and build a chariot hall okay and again i don't think there's an awful lot that i can do no royal decree is currently in progress 
I thought that's why I clicked on that one. Is that not in progress? Yeah, that is in progress. Okay, let's send the turn and see what happens. We might be able to just attack Tyrins and take it. So there's most of the troops now completed because we have 13 units. So that gives us some food and bronze. Do not neglect the development of your towns and cities. For many benefits accrue from construction at home. Put your carpenters and stonemasons to work. Now this wants us to construct any building. Now the question is, is that going to count the one that we're already working on? Um, I'm just going to click on, I'm just going to try something crazy here. I'm just going to click on a building to start the construction. I'm gu guessing it probably won't count. Um, it would be nice to be getting some gold coming in here. Growth, influence, happiness, wood and food. What does this give us? Reduced recruitment costs and upkeep costs. Let's get a cryo square actually. So we've got two buildings we're working on. And uh, there's nothing to say that we cannot go in here and try and attack the God among men. we've got some units here that are a little bit uh Victory awaits us. beaten up this one looks like it could be a little bit tricky because they do have a garrison in there we could build some battering rams i think we just build up some battering rams and continue the siege they may sally out okay so let's go on to the next turn to see what they do If they sally out, I might just retreat, but they're going to retreat anyway in 10 turns. Conquer towns and cities to expand your empire. Recruit troops from your settlements and send them forth to take more territory. Thus, you build ever greater armies and control yet more land. Such is the warrior's way. Now, I'm guessing while we're sieging, we cannot grow our recruitment yeah so we can't recruit while we're in foreign territory can we recruit a new hero looks like we can they're quite expensive but we could get ourselves a second um second uh, army going might be nice to actually get a an archer get a ranged hero What's this? Opulent. Plus one motivation after this hero ends a turn and Zeus is respected by your faction. Plus one to motivation after this hero ends his turn in an own province with organized games. But minus one to motivation if he ends his turn in an own province with negative populace. And minus two to motivation after the hero kills or takes captive. So let's grab him anyway. Let's recruit him. Will increase your total army upkeep by 18% of food and 5% of bronze. Your total army upkeep is estimated to increase by 214 food per turn. That is fine. And then he can go ahead and we'll just put some militia in there for now. We'll just get some like cheap units. I also noticed while we were in there that we do have the option to recruit agents. Uh, cannot afford any at the moment. Um, we have the maximum, uh, the current maximum, so we can't get any of these, so we've got epic agents, we've got priestesses, spies, and envoys, we can't get any of those right now. Are these ones fighters? Doesn't actually tell me what they do. The so gorgons. Is it, are these actually gorgons? Because gorgons in Greek mythology are the Medusa type creatures with the snakes for hair and a snake's a serpent's body. So are they actually gorgons? Because they've got satyrs as well and seers. It doesn't actually tell me what they do. Which is a little bit weird. Well, okay, I'm not going to worry too much about that right now because I can't actually do anything with them. So let's just go on to uh, to the next turn. The exclamation mark we've got here. I think that's just because I had the mouse off the screen. Uh, construct any building that has now been done, apparently. That gives us some wood and stone. No kingdom flourishes and endures through military conquest alone. Grow and maintain your settlements through. Yeah, we've done that. Upgrade any settlement building. That'll give us wood. If and you stone. demand tributes paid in money and resources from your vassals, 
they will have no choice but to comply. But be wary of abusing this privilege, lest you sow disquiet amongst them. So we've got two missions now. We've got one to upgrade a building, and we've got your one to... Your military might oh, grows, and with it, your influence and reputation. Yet your enemies rally against you. Make the effort to expand your fighting forces and keep the foe at bay. Okay, so three missions. Not all who serve maybe, you give maybe their four. best. Here we see one whose lack of motivation makes them of limited use. Perhaps even a liability. Action must be taken to remedy this. So the performance of heroes is dependent on how motivated they are to fulfill their duties. It is the responsibility of rulers to inspire confidence and zeal in their troops so that they in turn will carry out their orders with rightful valour. If a hero's motivation drops too low, they will start to perform badly in battle and undermine influence and happiness in their local province. Um, but this guy should be okay because we're just building up his army at this point. That's his rank. That's his movement range. His current motivation is two. So we've got three missions now. Uh, let's get some of the cheaper units. Let's get... Well, actually, let's put some units. I'm on it. So we've got three missions. One mission is to have a 20-unit army. One mission is to upgrade a building. And the other mission I've completely forgotten. Um, issue a royal decree which is uh, a, one that we already had upgrade a unit in the settlement oh request resources from a vassal we can do that under not king of men the lion's share so we can demand something from troys and let's demand food Your riches now it'll upset them but me. it completes the quest or completes the mission so we've demanded tribute that is fine uh, we'll continue the siege that's going on down here. They can't actually recruit Fall more troops. Show no, mercy. no reason why we can't build some more battering rams. We'll wait a little bit more. Um, I mean, we might just get them to, uh, Strike hard to just quit. They've only got eight turns left. And I'm building up a second army. We'll bring that second army in as soon as it's got a few more units. That'll make life easier for us. Frame rate is below 30. Yeah, it's nothing to do with my graphics settings. It's to do with the fact that it's the end turn phase. Uh, okay. So, we can upgrade a building. I'm guessing we can't upgrade you yet. Cannot build. You have insufficient funds to order this construction. Because it requires 230 gold. Uh, we'll have that in another turn or two. So, I think I'm just going to wait on that one. Uh, let us go and... There's our barter agreement ended. Let us go and take this second army. So we've got a 7 and a 13. Now it's not a 20 because obviously one of them is the general and you can't have two generals in an army. Um, but we can go down here and basically uh, put most of them. I should have grabbed one more one more unit to be fair. Uh, I mean, I, I can still do that. But I can go ahead and just move all of those units and put... So even though that army is sieging, I've actually managed to go waters. and turn it into a bigger army. I don't think you could do that in the previous games. I don't think you could move units between armies that were sieging. Take them down. Because that should now change the balance of power. It doesn't look like it has. So let's go ahead and, and build some more uh, Hold your nerve. siege units. We'll grab another... We'll grab one more... Um, something and we'll bring it back and just make that up to a 20 stack just because that'll complete the mission for us that'll be nice and, nice and easy if you order your army to cross the sea they will embark on ships when poseidon is with them they may travel as swiftly as the wind so just telling us about embarking, well that's fine, nothing there's really changed from previous games. We're still one gold short for doing that upgrade, so I'm not going to bother with effort. that. And for you, I think we will recruit... Oh, it scrolls down. I was expecting it to scroll from side to side, it scrolls down. Uh, we can get a chariot now. Sure, it's going to cost us 600 wood, but Understood. yeah, let's get a chariot. Cool. And uh, I think we'll just go straight on to the next turn there. We'll get that chariot. We'll take it. A down. rival power proposes a change in your relationship. Their offer may merit some consideration. 
you're quite far away, aren't you? So what is this barter agreement? This looks like it's a one-off thing. Um, so their demands, you want stone and you want to give me food. Now, I have a decent amount of food already. What's my stone per turn? I guess we can do it as a, as a one-off. I mean, if it helps relations, then fine. Sure, let's go ahead and do that. We've learnt a bit about diplomacy there. The unit moving across the sea. Now, this is Tyrins. Tyrins wants peace. Uh, we are going to decline. Obviously, what he wants, he wants me to give him stuff. Here, peace. you may take an overview of the world and gain knowledge such as only... So this is telling me about the strategic view. So we've issued the royal decree. It basically means that the research is now done. Excellent. Uh, cadence drills. Speed is the key to victory on the battlefield. Instruct the soldiers to train and maneuver swiftly. To tame land. Maintain at least 60% of the following influence in the specified provinces. The Achaean influence in Mycen Mycenae. Mycenaeasia, I think that is. Um, okay. Probably help once we've done this raid. I was just having a look over there because I saw there was some like text on the uh, Terra Incognita and I wondered what it, wondered what it was. Um, let's grab this unit then who now has a chariot. So we'll move you down here to this army. And this will then... We have to start the turn with a, an army of 20 for, it, for this um to count uh so it we Move won't it. complete the mission on this particular um one but we can go ahead and now just disband that second army so now we just have a full 20 stack and we're sieging Massacre sieging a city we, we're not at, oh this is looking a lot better now these guys are actually starting to um to wither i think i will let's have a look at the settlement i haven't seen the settlements yet in troy so i don't know how easy they are to breach oh that's going to be interesting Lots of ways in there. Lots of uh, curly paths up to the top. I do, I do want to fight it, but I think I'm going to give it like one more turn just to weaken them up a little bit. Because I'm still not confident in, in this game. Like I said, I'm not good at Total War games at all. I enjoy them, but I'm terrible at them. Um, so we can pick something else here. Campaign movement range Execute for all armies. Yes, way. campaign movement range is great. So let's go ahead and end the turn. Foreign emissaries seek a pact of non-aggression. So this is if Diomedes of Argos. Acceptable, it may lead. Do we want? So you want to give me food for a non-aggression pact? I guess there are other places that I can expand to first, but I don't need the food, so I'm going to say no. I'm not familiar enough with all of my neighbours to be willing to uh, accept something like that. The problem is, it's far too easy to accept a non-aggression pact and then get yourself stuck where you can't expand where you want to. And then what will make it worse is that um, the AI doesn't think twice about breaking non-aggression pacts. You want to give me a single barter of food and then 559 food per, per turn for 8 turns. So that's like another 4,000 food for 508 wood. I do have a lot of wood in storage, so I will accept that. That'll give me a lot of food. That will help with my growing army. Uh, we get a bonus to gold, bronze, and food because we've got a 20 stack. Control of every settlement in a province will give you complete dominion over all who live there. Expand your holdings and bring more of the Aegean under your heel. So here we go. We have a new mission, which is to control an entire province. Show your might by mounting raids. We're not raiding right now. I understand raiding. So, Mycenae, we're probably not going to get straight away. Uh, we already... I thought we controlled one of these. Yes, we control Epiterra. So, if we get Tyrins and Troys, and Troys is owned by our vassal. So, once we have Tyrins, then uh, we will control an entire province through ownership and vassalization. So, that will be fine. Show no mercy. So, let's go in here. Yeah, we've pretty much got these won. These guys are pretty much dead. I'm going to fight the battle manually. Uh, I could just auto-resolve it, but I want to go and have a look and see what their settlement's like. For some reason now, it doesn't look like... Oh, no, it's bringing in the allies. I was going to say what happened to the, to the garrison, but the garrison's just listed as allies. We do have some units here that aren't at full strength, but... 
I think we can safely sort of keep them uh, keep them out of the way. Nice to actually have back to go back to settlements where you can attack from like every direction. Total War Warhammer does not have those. They're all sort of like one-sided or two-sided. Uh, it is raining. Units take longer to recover from fatigue when idle. Let's wait it out if we can. Yeah, dry day. So let's go in and start deployment. We've got our battering rams. The Plenty walls of, of this doors city we can go may through. appear to be mighty, but no defenses are impregnable. Seek out their weaknesses. Break their gates or scale their walls. Attack at several points and you will split the defenders' forces, but also your own. So let's go and have and have two go ahead and have two units with uh, battering rams. Where are the doors? I was expecting there to be more more doors. More doors, not more dots, more doors. Um so we'll have two coming in from this side. I don't know, is two enough? Maybe do we need more? The, the, there are more doors over here. Let's go and grab um the shift. Yep, shift still makes you move really fast. Um, so let's go ahead and grab two more. Um, I think we've got the... Right, I don't want the javelins. Just get these two units. Get you over to the opposite side of the map. I mean, I could just literally click on the mini-map for this, but... Like I said, I'm not good at these games. Right. Let's move you there. And the rest of the guys on the other side are probably fine to just attack from where they are. There are multiple gates on this side, I think. No, just the one. But we've got four battering rams, so we're definitely getting in. I'm just going to go ahead and start the battle. And I'm just going to go ram and like, tell these battering rams to attack the... Uh... Bronze. These contraptions require strength and skill We to don't have anybody working these rams for some reason. City gate to match okay, let's move around the other side. And um, we'll get these guys to attack these gates. So you guys go for that gate. I'm guessing only one battering ram is going to go at a time. Because um, only one battering ram can actually attack the gate. But we can move the other battering ram closer in case the uh, in case one of them gets destroyed. I guess we should do that over here. We can't click on the gate. We can't actually click on the battering rams. Actually. Yes, we can. So we can start moving the, the other battering rams forwards. just so that we have the ability to uh, to do that. And then let's get all of these other units moving up. We, there we are taking shots from the archers, but we can we can scale over the walls. So let's just go ahead and, and, and move move over here. We'll start climbing up the walls Seek where we can. Important enemies. So they've actually committed quite a lot of their um, forces to defend this side, which is weird. It feels like they've... I mean, I, mean, I know there's only one gate on this side, uh, and they are firing at us with the towers, but it does seem like they've actually got more of their forces on the opposite side of the map, which is a bit weird. Now, the chariots definitely aren't going to make it up onto the walls, but we can get, like, the um, the spearmen up here. So let's go ahead and start getting some spearmen up onto these walls where we can. Uh, we can get our hero up there as well. And we'll keep moving in with these battering rams just so that we've got the uh, potential to... I want to take the walls over here somewhere as well. Do I have a unit moving this way? Can't actually attack the walls directly. Uh, you spearman, you get up there. We're going to try and take that tower. Let's keep our eye on things over here because I'm not Your really paying attention to what's going on. So you're going to attack that first. Certain locations are key to victory. I don't really have to any units something. over here to uh, try and take that back. We've got some javelins. Let's move up with you. Let me move these chariots back because I don't want them taking any hits. We'll, we'll break the walls down, then we'll get uh, the chariots up there. So you guys are actually getting up onto there. You should start to take these these towers. That's the way that that Your should. Your warriors uh, are attacking the gates. So if you guys can get up there, we do have some heading that way. We're attacking that gate. You have captured the enemy tower. The enemy Excellent. gates have been destroyed. So that tower is no longer firing at us gates are down. There's a great opportunity to bring the chariots in now. So let's bring the chariots in here. What about on the opposite side of things? So we have got the gates down here. Let's go ahead and get you guys inside. Can we get you off of you this have lost thing? Your siege equipment. Drop siege equipment, yes. 
So you get inside. Actually, get up onto the walls. And then you can take those guys back. Uh, you guys drop your siege equipment. Because I wasn't babysitting them, so they've kind of got themselves into a bit of a mess here. You guys just get up on the walls. We'll claim that for ourselves. So we've got a few units to the gates. coming in here, being a little bit of a bit of a pain. But we can get in there. Let's go back over to the other side. We do definitely want to try and catch... We are capturing that tower, so that's fine. Let's get you up here as well. Javelins, if you can attack those guys, that'd be great. Their hero's actually attacking my chariots. Let's get the chariots out of there for now. How are things going over here? So I, I didn't. Your warriors are losing heart. Yeah, I didn't put a lot of forces over on this side, so we are getting a little bit mushed. Although they've only got a the few ranged units on this side, so that's fine. Uh, their hero's going down already, which is great. I think we've actually For got this. For shame! Your warriors' courage has failed them. They run from the battle like frightened children. Round them up and send them back into the field. So, got quite a few uh, few units here that we can put in. Let's just move the chariots into the centre of the city. Uh, you guys are breaking. That's fine. We're taking this gate. We don't need to take the gate. We've, we've already broken it. It's just the towers that we're a little bit worried about. I want to try and take you guys out, if possible. I think most of their units are now down. So, not overly concerned by this. Let's get our hero in here chasing after some of these guys. Yeah, I think overall we're going to be okay. You have kept the gate. Chariots are going to move into the centre. They are pulling back slightly, so it does look like they're trying to uh, they're trying to defend here. Right, you guys are breaking. Let's go and see if we we can get those um, slingers. They're nearly down anyway. This unit may rally. By Ares, yep, they have warriors are rallying. So let's go and uh, attack those guys again. Uh, chariots are just working their way to the middle. Are we not there yet? Where are my chariots? Um, there. You're working your way up. It's take, you're taking your time to get there. But you are fairly fresh. Uh, let's go and pop the March of Hermes. Give us some extra speed. Let's go and try and get some of these guys up here. So we have got spearmen coming in. Our chariots are already in the uh, in the square. We are taking the uh, we are taking the city. Let's just start moving some of these other units forward. We've got people in here who just need to really be uh, getting in. They're, they're just the trying to defend. Your hidden units. Let's move you up there as well. In fact, let's just tell you to get into the into the centre. So we've taken a little bit of damage. That was very messy. It, it is a lot harder trying to... Oh, we've lost, lost a unit there. Uh, it is a lot harder trying to manage uh, an attack from several different directions at once. But I think overall we're fine. I'm not too concerned about what's going on over here. Okay, we've scared some units off. Let's come back in this way. We're still chasing you down. I think it was this other unit over here. Perhaps it came a little bit closer to one of these towers and got wiped out. Let's have you guys go and take out those skirmishers. Because there's not a lot of point you being over here. So yeah, it does, it does look like we lost a unit, but I'm not terribly concerned by that. Um, their heroes coming in from this side are... Oh, yeah, you've got a few units coming in over here, haven't you? I do have some more units coming in myself, including my hero... I definitely want to get in over here. I'm not going to pop that just yet. I'm going to try and use my chariots to just cause some havoc here if possible. Right, we've caused one unit to break. Oh, that was a very nice charge. He's popped one of his abilities, which isn't good. But we got that unit to break as well. And there we go. We've got the victory. Excellent. So we can just end that battle. Their army will automatically be destroyed because it was a settlement uh, claim. So I did take quite heavy losses there. So like I said, I'm not I'm not particularly good at this game. I'm better on the strategy side of things than I am on the, the tactical battles. I guess that's why I normally play stuff like, like uh, Civilization and, and things that are more turn-based. 
still it's a game right the important thing is you enjoy it actually captured some enemies there as well so we got some gold got some food got some experience the city is yours to do with as you please claim it as your own sack it or raise it to the ground leaving only ruins so we've got a lot lot of options here we could take uh, we could occupy it which is what we probably want to do uh we could loot and occupy it we'll get a little bit of gold some wood and some food and some unit replenishment uh we don't really want to sack it we could vassalize it but we want to grow so we're just going to occupy it. it's our first settlement really that we've taken so it makes sense just to occupy it and uh, that completes a mission, so that gives us 700 may wood. be declared in provinces that you rule. Issue your instruction and rouse the populace so they may better serve you. And uh, got to issue another royal commandment. So that, uh, that's a close victory. We know about that. Uh, Gain some armor, so we'll have a look at that. Killed an enemy in battle. Province secured. Faction destroyed. Okay, so first thing we want to do is click on the province and we can issue a commandment. So reduce construction time and construction cost of temples. Uh, minus 10% recruitment costs, uh, happiness and growth. Um, or plus, I think we want the happiness and growth, especially somewhere that we've just taken. So we'll do that. Uh, we can also upgrade the, um, the port. It'll give us some more food. And we can upgrade... The, the city, the settlement. Can we do it on this one, or are we, we too broke now? I guess we're too broke. Just short some population points, but that is fine. And uh, we can upgrade our barracks and our uh, archery range. Or our target stand, so we might as well go ahead and do that. Uh, I thought we lost a unit there. Maybe we didn't. Maybe they just fled off the battlefield, because we've still got all of our units. So we'll heal up there. That was quite quite decent actually how that worked out so what are the missions do we have left uh, upgrade any settlement building which we're currently working on issue a commandment which we've just done and uh, oh yeah maintain uh, influence okay so on to the next camera so you were raiding but now that's now my land so you'll stop raiding and have to sort off a little bit more so that's the royal commandment done. Food and wood. The blessing of the gods may be sought Maintain control of two worship. provinces. Construct an altar in honor of one of the Olympian altar. powers to earn their favor. So if we want to get two provinces, we really need to grab Corinth. So, I mean, we could try and vassalize these guys, I suppose. We'll have a list of the Corinthians. We'll have a look at that in a moment. Um... Yeah, let, let's see if we can actually just do that so we want to go into diplomacy which is where now diplomacy and we want the corinthians well they're 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 they don't like us so they're not going to accept that so the only way we're going to get that that from the corinthians is to take it that's fine uh i was looking at the happiness here the military presence is giving us plus 10 um so change per turn is going up by plus six um we could reduce taxes. We could definitely turn that off. That would, would help. We'll leave it as is for now. Why are you blocking me there? Dismiss all advice related events. Uh, the blessing of the gods may be sought through earthly worship. Ah, yes. Healthy growth in a province leads to the expansion of your city's and an increase in the benefits they bring. The populace thrives here, so the cities are ripe for improvement. So, which is the one here with the gods? Divine Will. So, Prayer to Hera. Not bothered by that. Zeus is... Um, Diplomatic agreements and barter. You're not bothered about that. Morale of enemy units. Success chance for agents. Athena is recruitment rank. Poseidon immune to deep seas. Aphrodite growth and happiness. Yeah, we'll pray to Aphrodite for growth and Hear happiness. Me, gods of Olympus. Okay, cool. Um, I will move that army out once the happiness there starts to improve 
a little. But right now, that's not looking like happening. Let's just end the turn. So, I have to say at the moment, it, it does feel a lot like a lot like all of the other Total War games. I mean, obviously, they're all very similar. They all follow uh, a very similar formula, but they do make little changes and tweaks with each one to try and add some new mechanics. Sometimes it's just an, you know, an old mechanic with a new name and a, a new interface, but basically does the same thing. Um, I don't know. I'm not sure that this is necessarily... Um, I'm not sure that this is necessarily a game that I would continue to play simply because I, I, ju I know I just prefer Total War Warhammer that's because I prefer the fantasy setting the, the only other Total War game that I've put any serious amount of hours into is, is uh, Rome 2 because I, I, I love the whole the whole Roman thing um, but the other ones that I played Shogun Napoleon I don't know they just didn't ca catch me um, but Total War Warhammer 1 and 2 put a lot of hours of hours into them we'll definitely get number 3 when it comes out because I just love the variety of units the variety of factions the um the issue that i have with the the historical total war games uh is that for me, the privations of war may lead to losses your armies will slowly regain their strength when in friendly territory if you look at something like total war warhammer there are literally hundreds of different units that you can have uh you know different heroes um, different abilities, we've got ranged, cavalry, large, monsters, infantry. Uh, there's, there's just so much stuff there. But then you've got the magic as well. And I think that's the, 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 all of that stuff together is what draws me to it. These historical ones, if you're the sort of person that likes the real-time battles, if the real-time battles is your thing, then I think you can probably find your groove with any uh, Total War game. Although, again, I think having some faster-moving units like cavalry does help. Uh, you are limited in this basically to just having um, chariots, which I, you know, again, it, it's a lack of variety of historical units, and that's always the problem. Plus of which different factions, you know, even if you're a completely different uh, faction with, uh, you know, a different culture from a different country and different technology, you've still basically got swordsmen and spearmen and archers and chariots. You know, there isn't, there isn't really a lot of difference between them. It's just a few tweaks on a few numbers here and there. I think that's the kind of thing where it's difficult for, it's difficult for me to want to learn how to play a new total war game if i'm not going to enjoy it as much as the one that i'm already playing and uh, you know in terms of presentation the total war warhammer games still look fantastic you know they're a few years old now particularly the first one but they still look great uh, this does look amazing i do have to you know give creative assembly absolute credit here out of all of the uh, total war games um the, the map on this one is probably, I don't know, I'd say it's on a par with Total War Warhammer. Uh, obviously, that's a fantasy map, and this is not supposed to be a fantasy map. But, you know, they've gone into great detail. The water effects look fantastic. Just like the moonlight there, how we, the moonlight is shining off the water. That's really, really good. I like what they've done with the map in the, the whole Terror Incognita thing, that you can see where, like, the islands are and, and stuff like that. But you can't... Uh, see any detail of that I don't, you know, they have done a good job i can't can't really argue with that the map also looks huge by the way uh, again not not as big as the one in total war warhammer but that's because that that's basically two games stuck together now um so yeah presentation wise they've done a really good job i like the uh the little animations that you get on the map screen when you've got the the heroes and things sort of taunting each other and talking and reading through bits of the story uh, i think i'd have to put a lot more hours into it to really discover if there's anything particularly unique about it that sets it apart from some of the other ones, uh, on sort of face value, I'm not seeing a huge amount of things that, that do. Uh, one of the things that I read uh, that Creative Assembly had put forward before this game actually came out was it was supposed to feel more like you're actually part of the battle. So rather than being this general sort of like zoomed all the way out and, uh, you know, commanding this thing almost from space like you are in some of the Total War games, that you were supposed to feel much closer and i, I noticed that they they have um restricted the camera a little bit more in the tactical battles you feel much closer to the ground you feel i mean obviously you can move the camera around but you just feel like you're watching a much smaller uh section of the battle and with with smaller armies smaller unit uh, sizes and because uh, i didn't see an option to change that i'm not sure if there is an option to change that is there anything in options 
uh, graphics, advanced, uh, unit size. Okay, so the unit size is just on large. You can go up to extreme with that. So that is, I just left that on default. So you can actually have uh, larger unit sizes. That's uh, that's fine there. Um, obviously, I'm running everything on ultra here. I'm just running the game in a 19 uh, 20 by 1080 window. That's because I've got a huge monitor. Obviously, I'm streaming and recording at the same time. Uh, but this is just basically the default ultra settings uh, for the game. So there's a lot of um, uh, a lot of options for the graphics uh, in there. Definitely, you can see, see the resolution there, but it's running running on the ultra preset. Um, but it it does look um, absolutely amazing. That that has to be said. Um, I'm going to put uh, an end to the stream here. I haven't streamed for ages, to be honest. Uh, and um, I've spent most of the afternoon just trying to get everything set up so that it works. So this was really just a sort of test to see uh, to see if it would work. Um, and uh, I'm going to consider it a successful test, even if my little mini campaign of Troy wasn't all that successful. So uh, thanks a lot for those of you who dropped by and stuck around. I will be streaming more regularly in the future, and I hope to see you uh, then. And hopefully we'll get to play lots of interesting games so thank you guys for watching and i will see you next time until then goodbye for now